In this edition of Work With Me, I am creating a mock-up in Canva and then I'm going to create some wall art and list it on Etsy. If you want to learn how to do these things, I would love it if you followed along with me. First, you'll have to have your images loaded into Canva. I've done this in other videos, but essentially you create your wall art, download them as PNGs, and then upload them back into your Canva so you can use them in your mockups. In Canva, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of free mockups you can use. Now, my canvas here is 2000 by 2000. It's an odd size, it's what I use for my Etsy listings. So some of these mockups are not going to be perfect. I'm gonna show you my process and how I make them work. You can always create your own on Photoshop as well, but I don't mess with Photoshop right now. I'm just doing the quick and dirty way. I'm working on progress, not perfection. I hope that I can inspire you to do the same. Once you put your image inside the frame, you're going to have to size it a little bit. You may need to make it smaller or bigger. The important part is that you don't distort it because the mock-up is supposed to show people what it could look like in their home. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a mock-up. It's going to be a smaller image for people. They're not going to be blowing it up and zooming in on it. So don't worry about perfection. If it's off just a little bit, it really doesn't matter. I promise. This mock-up is finished. I can take it and upload it into my Etsy shop right away. I love that whenever your images are the same size, you can just drag and drop and swap them out. This isn't always a perfect science, but for the most part, it works really well. And it saves some time, so that's a good thing too. You could easily make several mock-ups in just a few minutes. I like to work in batches, so what I would do is I would create maybe 20 different mock-ups in one work session, and then in my next work session, I'll go and load them into Etsy. I really, really like working in batches. I'm going to adjust this one a little bit. Uh, I could drag it and just make it bigger and make it two images, but I think I'm going to try three. I have a lot of wall art that are in sets of three and four. This little button up here, I just wanted to go through and do this again. This is how you lock your background in place or any element you want really. You can lock any of them in place. I like to lock the background in place so when I'm moving my artwork in, that's the only part that I am moving around. I'm not accidentally clicking the background and moving in as well. These are principles that I use in my religious gift shop and you know honestly I don't know if this frame is gonna work. My backgrounds are white and these are gray which is usually good because it kind of pops out but I don't like how these are situated. Hmm. Let's see if it looks better when I swap these out. It's not bad, but I don't love it either. I don't have anything really that would match this aesthetic in this shop. I do have some witchy stuff that would match, but just for fun, I'm going to grab one of my free wall arts that I put on the madmommy.com and show you how quickly you can add it. That fits really perfectly. And again, drag and drop just to swap everything out. Super easy. I click download and I save these as PNGs or JPEGs for my Etsy shop. Once you download your mockups, if you download them like I just did, you're going to have to extract them. It's also smart to name these instead of one, two, three, four. After you extract, go back and rename them so you know which mockups they are. You could also create a folder inside of your Etsy shop folder that has a folder for every product. So you'll have your product, your mockups, and any type of social media images that you might be sharing elsewhere. 
This is a great way to keep yourself organized, but you have to stay on top of it and do it as soon as you're extracting it or it's going to be a mess to clean up. I'm gonna do a few more mock-ups just so you can get a little more comfortable with it and then I'm going to do some simple wall art and a Etsy listing. I didn't do this with this set of printables because the backgrounds are white and the frames I'm using right now are white as well. If you have a printable that is just not flowing well with the background, you can adjust the opacity, which is up to the right where it says position. If you look over to, you have a little gradient. You click on that and then you can adjust the opacity. You don't want to too much because then it's going to change what the principle looks like in the mock-up. You want it to look just like it is when it's going to print. But I found if you adjust the opacity just a little, like 5 to 10 notches down to 90 or 95, then it just helps it blend in with the background a little bit more. I like when the printable or the wall art matches the setup. So I pulled the pink one out, put the green one in, I'm going to go with this. There are so many mock-ups, you guys. This is awesome. Nursery printables are a huge niche on Etsy. So I do have some of them in one of my shops. I don't have any handy, so I'm just going to throw something in here. I don't think it's going to fit right. Nope. I don't like that. That's a weird size. Ooh, I like this one. All right, so you see how this doesn't fit very well. I'm not going to cut any of it off. I love it. I think that I'm going to just screenshot this and save just the photo part. So I don't have any wall art like this, but that skull fits that cat really well. If you want to duplicate, you just click that button right there. And then what I'm going to do next is flip horizontally. Uh, I don't have wall art like this, but I think I need to make some. Ooh, look at the red one. Yeah, I'm going to go with the red one. Super, super fitting for this mock-up. I love it. I love it. I'm going to add some text and see if maybe I could just use like a spooky font to use on this mock-up. <laughs> Looks kind of amateur, but I really don't care. It's kind of fun. I'm in love with this. All right, I need to go make these because I want this in my shop. <laughs> Next, we're going to make this wall art. If you're going to do wall art like this, I would suggest adding some text. You don't want to just sell clip art that you've found. You want to kind of make it your own, but I'm going to just list these skulls so you can see the start to finish process here. Duplicate, flip, duplicate, replace. That literally took like five seconds. This isn't sped up. I think this is real time. Before you download any of your digital files, you may want to create a thank you page. I use this page to offer coupons for future purchases. I don't have this photo saved anywhere recent because I'm not as organized as I told you guys to be. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab it from my Etsy real quick. And the reason that I'm doing this is so I can promote other products inside of this one. This is one of my favorite printable sets ever. I'm not the best at all of this. <laughs> Which is why I, we're working together on this, right? I want to link this listing. So I'm going to click on the image and then I'm going to click on the link button. Insert the link and click apply. I guess these don't really go together. You can't really see this one without the background either. Hold on.
I think I need a background for this. Yeah, that's not really showing up. Um, this will not be perfect, but I'm going to try to make this a background to separate it just a little bit. To move this background behind the image, we're just going to click position and then backward. Probably going to use my keyboard to move it just a tad because the mouse moves it a little more than I'd like. You can also increase the size. My eyes are definitely not getting any better with my age. So down there where it says 61%, you can increase that size so you don't have to squint. I have a specific code that I use in my digital items. So if someone uses the code 15 off, I know that they got it from my digital item because that's the only place that I list it. We've got to download this so we can add it to our shop. I download mine as a PDF. And if you need to shrink a PDF after you download it, just Google compress PDF free. And there's a few options. They each only allow one to two a day. So that's why I said to Google it rather than giving you one source uh, because you can bounce between those three, four, five sources and compress several of your products a day instead of worrying about waiting till the next day to compress your next two. We use PDF print because these are supposed to be printed. And then in order to do the mockups, we also save them as a PNG. Because I already completed my mockup, I'm going to skip this step. I'm going to download my other mockup as a PNG and get it uploaded to Etsy. Because I already have a similar listing, I'm just going to copy this one. I deleted the photos from the last listing and now I'm uploading the mockup from this one. It's best to have at least four or five photos. If you can fill all of the photo spots, that's even better. I'm just putting one mockup in right now for time's sake because I'm shooting a video and you guys are working with me. When you put your title in, you want to include a few keywords. These are words that customers can put into Etsy search to find your product. You'll make sure that you click digital because this is a digital item. You don't want anyone being confused. Because this listing is similar to the other, I'm able to just swap a few key sections out. When you're putting your tags in, you're going to use keywords again. And these keywords aren't anything fancy. They're just phrases that your potential customers could use to find your exact product. You're basically describing the product as best you can in short phrases. After you get everything situated, you're going to hit publish, but you want to go through and look at each section to make sure you did what you were supposed to do in your listing, right? So this little yellow triangle is telling me that my photo should be bigger. However, my photo is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels, and that is the minimum for the listing. So it actually looks fine on the other end. If you get this warning from Etsy, check on the front end to see if it looks okay, because you don't need to waste your time resizing things if it does. I'm gonna adjust the thumbnail a little bit. You always wanna make sure your thumbnail looks as perfect as possible. And now I'm ready to hit publish. I have 40 free listings because on Etsy, if you share your link with a friend, you get 40 free listings and then they get 40 free listings when they start their shop. So if you have friends that want to start their Etsy shops, share your link with them and then you'll get 40 free listings and they'll get 40 whenever they sign up. I mean, that's only like eight bucks, but that translates to a lot of money over the course of a year if you're listing 10 items a day on Etsy, right? If you don't have a invite link and you want to use mine, it's themadmommy.com forward slash Etsy. Let's see what this bad boy looks like now. Nice. Don't pay attention to my pricing. I know that freaks people out. I like to sell cheap wall art. That's just what I do. If you want to sell something like this for like seven bucks, go for it. 
Hey everyone! Hopefully that helped you if you were trying to figure out how to do those things in Canva. I'm going to continue doing these work with me sessions. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I would love your ideas. Uh, you can click like and subscribe if you're feeling nice today. If not, I still hope to see you next time.